Have you heard about Kundalini energy before? Do you know what are the benefits of activating this type of energy? Let me give you a step-by-step -step guide to awaken it and experience little miracles in your life. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Mystery Teaching, my name is Gergő, I hope you are well, I hope you feel amazing and if you are new to the channel then welcome, greetings and namaste or if you are a returning viewer or returning beautiful soul then hey thanks for coming back, I appreciate you. And welcome to episode number 39, the magical power of Kundalini and how to awaken it. So we all have life energy, right? Uh, some call it life force, some call it prana, it doesn't really matter. We all have some form of life energies and life force energies, um, otherwise we wouldn't be alive, right? And Kundalini is a form of life energy um, which is um, kind of sleeping or inactive uh, in the base of the spine until you awaken it, which we do today, um, and uh, it has a lot of good benefits, so we're gonna go through all of them, but first of all, as I said, it's inactive and it's uh, kind of dormant in the base of the spine, but through different practices you can awaken and strengthen these energies. What kind of practices? We talk about spiritual practices, obviously, um, for example, meditation or yoga, in this case kundalini yoga, or different breathing techniques, or fasting even, or um, what else can I think? Chakra work, different type of chakra work basically. Kundalini is a divine energy and also a healing energy and once it's awakened by you, um, it can remove all kind of blocks, energy blocks in your energy system, in your chakra system. How can you have blocks or why we have energy blocks in the body? This can be through many things, for example, stress or illness or negativity. And um, if you ever felt uh, like like no matter how hard you try you just you just can't achieve the results you want or or you always find obstacles in your way and and things just don't happen the way you want no matter how hard you try or no matter what you do that's usually because you have some form of blocks in the energy let me give you an example for example um, if we lie that blocks our throat chakra that's one example. Or if we are emotionally unstable, that can usually block uh, our sacral or our solar plexus chakra. Or for example, if we cannot forgive to someone or we cannot forgive to ourselves, that usually can block the heart chakra. So these are just a few examples. Um, but you can remove these blocks through different works. But today we will talk about Kundalini energy and the benefits. So as I said, Kundalini is a divine energy and it's also a healing um, energy and once it's awakened you can experience that it, it how to say this it makes your life energy flow easier and you will feel more calm more peace and more joy in your daily life um, as well as more creativity and more wisdom so like creative ideas can enter your mind and you will feel less stress and worry in the same time. Um, one of my great, great teachers, Jim Rohn, said that we all have million dollar ideas multiple times a day, but we usually don't listen to our inner voice and we convince ourselves not to do those things for different excuses and different reasons. But what he was talking about is part of this so like those creative ideas those really good ideas will enter your mind and and as i said wisdom will appear in inside of you inside your brain because we talk about a divine energy so it's super cool and super important and if you're ready let's get to the step-by-step -step guide of how to awaken this energy and how to do the kundalini meditation step one is quite simple 
Um, it's about picking the right time of the day, whatever fits you. So for example, some people like to meditate in the morning, some people like to practice in the evening before they go to bed. It's entirely up to you, just pick the right time that's best for you, that's step one. Step two is also simple, make sure you don't eat before you practice, or if you eat, uh, wait at least one hour before you do your Kundalini meditation session, simply because the body would focus on digesting, which requires a lot of energy, huge amount of energy, and that's not ideal if you wanna practice this. Um, obviously, this is why we feel a bit sleepy or tired after we eat. Just think about when after lunch um, you have a coffee, for example, or, or we feel a little bit like, oh, I want a nap uh, and things like that. That's simply because digestion requires huge amount of energy. So make sure you don't eat before you practice or if you eat, wait at least one hour. That's step two. Step three is make sure that you wear light and comfortable clothing. Um, it might sound silly, but usually when I meditate, I like to wear only underwear or even nothing. <laughs> As I said, it sounds silly, but but the less clothes you have, the more comfortable and the lighter clothing you have, the better you can practice and you're not gonna think about, oh, it's not comfortable here, it's not comfortable there. So this is a simple reason. Make sure your clothing is very comfortable for you. Step four, find an ideal place that quiet enough, first of all, comfortable enough. Um, you can lay out a mat if you want. Uh, you can sit on a chair if you want. Um, it's entirely up to you, but the point is that it should be quiet and comfortable. Step five is about two things. One is that you cross your legs. Um, the reason is because to awaken Kundalini energy, um, if you cross your legs, it kind of helps the energy to move like in this type of crossing movement. And the word Kundalini itself uh, means coil or serpent. Um, and that's not a coincidence. And when we talk about serpent or snake, it's not some evil bad thing. Uh, for example, in Hinduism, it's a very positive thing because this type of energy makes its way up like, 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 a, like let's say like a movement of a snake uh, through the spine, through the chakras, all the way to the top. So this is why if you cross your legs, then it will help to flow this energy and your spine need to be straight um, and upright. So these two, legs crossed and straight spine, simple as that. Step six is about deciding how long you want to practice. When it comes to Kundalini, the recommendation is to practice either three minutes, seven minutes, 11 minutes, 22 minutes, or 31 minutes. Three minutes will already start to increase your blood circulation. If you practice for seven minutes, then the brain patterns will start to change from beta waves for, to a more calm alpha waves and then eventually to an even deep relaxing delta brain waves. If you practice for 11 minutes, then the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous systems will begin to accommodate this increased energy. And if you practice for 22 minutes, then anxiety producing thoughts in the subconscious mind will begin to clear. So you will have less anxious thoughts and you will feel more and deep relaxed and in a better mood. And finally, if you practice for 31 minutes, that will affect your mind and your entire aura and your entire energy system and you will have your chakras balanced completely and this balance will persist throughout the whole day. So that's 31 minutes. So the point is, pick your time. I would say if you never practice, then start with the three minutes practice and build it up uh, day by day. Um, and um, just just follow your your emotions, how you feel about it. So if you feel like, oh, I don't wanna practice 11 minutes, then just do three or seven, it's up to you. Just pick your time and you can set up some uh, timer or alarm, but make sure it's not something loud and annoying. Uh, it's better if it's something really calm, for example, um, sun balls or, or, or Tibetan balls or some nice pan flute music, for example, because you will be in a really relaxed 
state and you don't want to mess it up by the end with some beep 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 kind of sound so make sure if you set a timer that it will be some relaxing and nice sound that will just give you a sign that okay you can finish the practice step seven is also two things find some kind of mantra and focus on your breath when it comes to mantra it can be something very simple depending what your intention what your intention is so for example um, if you want to feel less stressed then don't focus on oh i want to be less stressed less stressed because then you focus on stress and you know where focus goes energy flows and results shows so for example your mantra in this case could be something like i feel at peace or i'm in peace with myself this is just one example but if you have other um, intention then just set a simple mantra for yourself and when it comes to breathing it's very simple um, basically just find a rhythm in your breathing and if you breathe for like inhale to seven eight counts so like one two three four five six seven uh, and exhale the same amount of time then that's all you need to do and it's simple as that or it can be around five six seconds of inhale and five six seconds of exhale one important thing is that when you feel that your lung is already full then don't force it further like you know and, but as i said find a very comfortable rhythm and make sure that it will calm you more and more so something like this and step eight which is the final step is the completion of the practice which can be in in some traditions for example it can be bring the palms together namaste or it can be raising your arms with one final breath the same with the palms for example and you don't need to jump up straight away obviously when you finish and complete the practice you can sit there a bit longer you know you can you can be with yourself you can enjoy the quiet moments you can you can be grateful for it you know you can practice some gratitude at the end it's entirely up to you but whether you close your palms or whether you raise your arms it all will be a very nice way to complete your practice now please note or please remember one thing that if you ever experience that you feel a bit uh, dizzy for example or maybe you have a little bit of headache or you feel like your heart is uh, beating slightly faster um, or something similar then you need to know it's part of the process you can have these um, experiences uh, and that's absolutely normal but do not get scared do not be worried um, if you experience any any of these and you're not sure what to do simply just stop the pra practice for that day and do it next time or next day again um, and eventually these will disappear or you will never experience them but everybody is different so i just thought i mentioned that you might experience these things but you don't need to worry about them and finally um if this practice will help you in your spiritual growth and in your spiritual awakening then it's amazing and beautiful and with this type of energy with the kundalini activation you can experience small miracles in your life you can you will experience that you just allow life to happen as it meant to happen for you and maybe you will experience uh, different uh, number patterns appearing in your life repeating numbers and other type of small miracles which we call signs of spiritual awakening and if that's the case then i hope your journey will be and is amazing and i really do hope that you got some value from this video so it was worth it to record it feel free to share it drop me a comment below let me know what you think or if you ever practice this type of meditation and make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can get notified whenever i upload a new video i love you all i appreciate each and every one of you and i'll see you next time stay blessed bye bye